Alabama has dominated the series against Ole Miss traditionally, but for the last two years on game day, Ole Miss has been the better team, although it's not cost Alabama an SEC championship or a berth in the college football playoff. We bring in Stephen M. Smith of a Touchdown Alabama to help us with one of the big games on Saturday with Ole Miss hosting the Crimson Tide. All right, Stephen M., uh, after the Western Kentucky win, 38-10, to 10, which would seem to most of us to be a airtight win, impressive performance again for Alabama, coming off the demolition of USC. Nick Saban called out his football team for not taking care of the details, being sloppy, not taking care of business, not necessarily looking at the final score, but what he expects the standard out of his team. Uh, what do you think he's really talking about there? Alabama, the first two games, has not been able to impose its will line. And Jonah Williams and Cam Robinson at right tackle and left tackle have done well. But the interior guys, Rush Pierce Baker at right guard, Lester Cotton at left guard, and of course, Bradley Bozeman at center, quote, time generating that push up front on the offensive line to help. Damian Harris, Bo Scarborough, B.J. Emmons, and the host of other backs get up and down the field and create those yards. Alabama only 81 yards rushing against Western Kentucky, though it had 242 against USC. A good chunk of those were off explosive plays, so it was not really much consistency, just explosive plays. And Alabama, he wants to run the football and establish control that was one of the points that he was upset about. Uh, another point that he was kind of uh, upset with was the the play call at the end that was made by Lane Kiffin. Kiffin trying to get Blake Barnett some confidence. Barnett, two of six passing in the game versus Jalen Hurts, who was 23 for 36 for 287 yards, two touchdowns. For those of you who love math, Jalen Hurts completed 64% against the Hilltoppers. So Lane Kiffin trying to get some motivation for Blake Barnett. Nick Saban thinking, dude, we've got the game in the bag. Let's run the football, kill the clock, go home. A spread offense play in which he's got motion. Not sure if Robert Foster knew what the play call was. The snap was a little bit to the outside of Barnett. He couldn't quite handle it. Results in a fumble, Western Kentucky jumps on it. You see Kiffin pull the old Steve Spurrier, throw the headset off in anger. And in mid set of Kiffin throwing his headset, Saban's already in his face, fuming rage, giving Kiffin an absolute earful, as if to say, that's not the play call I wanted. What are you doing? Western Kentucky gets a garbage touchdown off of that to end the game 38-10 to 10 in favor of Alabama. Saban more so wanting to go into the Ole Miss game with having the only defense that has not given up a touchdown in two games, but that will not happen due to that particular play call. Lane Kiffin and Nick Saban have worked extremely well together, regardless of what some of us thought about what the relationship could be when uh, Kiffin joined the staff. Uh, so th you're going to have that at times, especially a guy like Lane Kiffin, who loves to work his wizardry as an offensive coordinator versus Nick Saban, who is a practical guy who says, let's run the ball and get out of here uh, with the big lead and uh, get home and work on Ole Miss. Jalen Hurts, uh, your thoughts about uh, his progress to date, uh, what he showed us against Western Kentucky versus uh, what we saw uh, the second half against uh, USC. I thought he did a better job uh, passing the football. You see the arm strength. Jalen Hurts had three passes in that game that were in excess of 40 yards. You definitely see the arm talent, uh, the ability to extend the play. There were a couple of throws that he needs to get a little bit more air under the football and allow these guys to run under it and make the play. But there were, also, there were also a couple of passes, Mark, where he put the ball on the hands of Garrett Dieter, and both guys just dropped the ball in the end zone, and you have to help out your quarterback. When he's putting the ball on your number, in your hands, in the bread basket, so to speak, you got to secure that ball and bring it in. Dieter, O.J. Howard did not do that on two separate occasions, 
But as far as the arm town is concerned, where, where Jalen Hurts goes and the uh, ability to extend the play, did a fantastic job on Saturday against Western Kentucky, airing the ball out, uh, making some very proper reads, did not, not turn the ball over, and that's the key ingredient to run Saban's offense, protecting the football. Jalen Hurts did that. You know, Stephen, when we look at the Ole Miss team for the first half against Florida State, they looked like one of the best teams in the country out of the gate. Everything was working. They're certainly not that team, but they're also not the team that got blown out by Florida State in the second half. This is an extremely talented team. They've been hit by injuries. Um, Webster lost in the secondary, possibly their best cover corner. Uh, Swinney, who was going to be a compliment to Jordan Wilkins at running back, and obviously Wilkins academically ineligible, so they've lost a lot at running back, and Akeem Judd is kind of the guy at running back. So just kind of assess what you see out of the Rebels and how they could possibly hang in this game against Bama. What's what's their puncher's shot? It's, it's, it seems like it would be uh, Chad Kelly throwing the ball all over the lot, possibly. It's a mixture of that and Mark creating turnovers, and this is where Isaac grows. And also Demarcus Gates, those three have got to become the tripod of leadership, starting off with Isaac Gross and Marcus Haynes, creating that pressure and hearts, keeping him within the pocket, corralling him, not allowing him to break and tame and extend the play. I and mean, also Demarcus uh, – Gates being able to break down, make those tackles in space, get those tackles for loss, limit Alabama's run game. But it's going to be the uh, the mixture of Gross, Haynes, and Gates being that three-leg tripod, that three-headed monster on defense. And then offensively, Chad Kelly, not just Quincy at a boy, Joe, Markel Pag, Demoria Stringfellow, Evan Ingram, but some of these young guys, uh, DJ Metcalf, uh, Van Jefferson, A.J. Brown, and A.J. Brown in particular that reminds a lot of Rebels fans of Laquan Treadwell. Is he on Laquan Treadwell's level? Not yet. We're going to pop the brakes on that one. But the guy, a very, very talented playmaking receiver, that being A.J. Brown. So Chad Kelly, a mixture of him throwing the football as well as the likes of, Ga- likes of uh, Gates, Haynes, and Isaac Gross affecting the quarterback and continuing to limit that Alabama run game. All right, so Alabama goes to Oxford. They suffered a loss there a couple years ago when O.J. Howard was beat for an interception in the end zone late in the game. There was a turnover late in the first half. They kept Ole Miss in the game as well. Um, Interesting matchup there in Alabama last year where the tie turned it over five times, made a valiant comeback to get back in it. But as I noted off the top, Of course, the Tide still wins the SEC the last two years. Now they go to Ole Miss is now a 10-point favorite against the Rebels teams that's extremely dangerous and talented in areas but has their injury concerns and a few issues of concern along the offensive front in particular against Bama's uh, amazing front seven and front four in particular. Uh, Stephen M. Smith, a touchdown Alabama, helping to set up Alabama and Ole Miss and Oxford. Uh, Stephen, appreciate the time as always, man. No problem, Mark. I will be making that trip to the Grove this season.